Hello everyone, let's continue our discussion on MATLAB. A couple of things I want to remind you of. First off, you got to keep in mind your order of operation. Uh, MATLAB will stick with that order of operation. So if I do something like uh, 32 divided by, oh, let's get back in there. If I do something like 32 divided by 4 times 2, you might think, well, that's 32 divided by 8, that's equal to 4, but it isn't. It's equal to 16, because the order of operation says you read left to right. And so 32 divided by 4 is 8, and then times 2, that's equal to 16. So be careful about that and watch where your parentheses go. All right, so keep in mind your PEMDAS uh, when, you, when you go in with uh, order of operation. Parentheses, exponents. Technically, parentheses aren't a, an operation, but they come first. Exponents, multiplication, division, reading left to right. Again, multiplication and division have the equal preference. And then addition and subtraction have equal preference as well. But then you do that left to right. A couple of things we've talked a little bit about vectors already, but let's talk about lists. Because a list is a series of numbers that MATLAB just puts one right after the other. So I might call this list A. And I might want to make that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And there's my list. And oh, I made a mistake. There's a 45 in there. That's good. Because it's a pain in the butt to type that out one right after the other. There's got to be a better way. And in fact, there is. So list A is going to equal 1 through 10. And now you can see that it just lists the numbers 1 through 10, and I didn't have a mistake in there like I did before. And if I take 3 times the list, that's certainly doable. So you can see there, there's 3 times that list. And if I, if I call the first list the x-axis, and maybe I want to say something like list B, and that's going to equal 3 times list A, I might want to do something like graph that. So I could say plot uh, list A on the x-axis and list B on the y-axis. And you can see this yellow window down here is giving me some information about how to use the plot function. We'll get to that in more detail in a later video. And there you can see my list. Of course, the x-axis goes from 0 to 10, and the y-axis goes from 0 to 30. Uh, I'd actually technically from 3 to 30, but anyway, it's in 0 to 30, so it's pretty uh, pretty straightforward, nothing too exciting. All right, but what if I wanted to do, let's say, something like, uh, oh, let's say I want to do the sine of x. So I might say something like theta, so I'll do the sine of theta. Theta is equal to 0 in steps of 0 0.1 up through 2 times pi. And this is going to be a big list, so I really don't want to see it all, so I'm going to put the uh, semicolon there to suppress it. It's up here, and you can see up in here there's 30, 63 variables in there, right? And then let's do the y-axis, but let's not call it y. Let's call it phi, and so phi is going to equal the sine of theta. And again, I don't want to see this, so I'm just going to type that in, and you can see it's the exact same size. Well, now I can do a plot. Uh, and on the x-axis, I'll have theta, and on the y-axis, I'll have phi. Keep in mind, I capitalized the phi, so I've got to uh, keep that going. And you can see the sine function there in our window. Okay, so that looks just like what it should have. All right, I can make it bigger there if I want. What if I wanted to do something like the sine of x squared, right? I've already got list a, so I'll do that. So I want to do list a squared. So maybe I've got y equals list a squared. Well, when I do that, I get yelled at because I can't multiply those two together. In fact, if I do list a and I try to multiply that by list b, I'm going to get yelled at there as well. But certainly there's a way to do it, and in fact there is. So if I wanted to find all the elements in list A squared, what I could say is y is equal to list A. And then 
instead of squared, which would look like this, I'm going to put a period in front of the, um, the caret, which means the exponent is 2. And what the period does is it says, hey, do this for each element one at a time. So 1 squared, 2 squared, etc. And you can see that there. And then I can do a plot of list A and Y. And you can see that square right there. Looks good. All right. Uh, if I wanted to multiply list A times list B, I can do that. But I'll put a period before the times and then type in list B. And there they are multiplied together. OK, so that's how we're going to multiply lists when we're working in MATLAB. OK, well, what about regular vectors? Well, there are regular vectors in MATLAB. So let's take um, a square vector. And uh, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to say uh, 3, negative 2, 1. And then I'll put in a semicolon instead of a comma. And then negative 2, 7, and negative 4, semicolon there. And then 8, uh, that's a period. OK, 8, negative 3, and negative 2. And I think I'm good, but I better give this a name. Uh, so I'm just going to call this coef. You'll see why later on. And I hit enter, and there's my coef matrix. All right, and I might create another matrix. Uh, I'm just going to call this dummy because I'm really not going to worry about it too much. That could be one, two, three, and then negative four, negative two, one, and then five, three, one. And there's my dummy. And of course, I can multiply these together. And so I can take coef times dummy. And there they are multiplied together. Now, that's not element by element. If I did coef period times dummy, now you can see that's element by element, right? So the upper left corner is 3 times 1. Below that, I have negative 2 times negative 4, which is positive 8 and then 8 times 5, which is 40, etc. So that's a different multiplication. That's going to be element by element multiplication. I also have um, multiplication by the identity. So I might say identity. And of course, that's going to equal 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. 0, 0, 1. And if I take dummy times identity, I get dummy back with no change. OK. All right, well, remember when we did systems of equations, I could do the inverse of a system of equations. And so I'm going to create another matrix. And this is going to be the constants. So I'm going to call that const. And that's going to equal. Now this is going to be a vertical matrix. So the first element is 2. And then the next element is 1. And the next element is 3. Right? And this would be part of a system of equations where I have, uh, let, me, let me bring back my coef. So I'm going to have 2x minus, excuse me, 3x minus 2y plus z equals 2. And then negative 2x plus 7y minus 4z equals 1. And then 8x minus 3y minus 2z equals 3. So this is a system of equations. And the way I did this is I took the inverse of the coefficients. So coef caret negative 1 times const. And when I do that, I get my answer, which is x equal to 1, y equal to 1, and z equal to 1. And so I can solve systems of equations using matrices in MATLAB, just like I did when I worked it out in Excel and on my calculator. 
All right, so there's a little bit more for you to work with. We'll stop at that point, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you.